Hey people, it's me, Anya. Welcome back to my channel. So, I've been leading a lot lately, which is so, so, so great. May has been a great leading month for me so far, and it's so, so nice. And I've been filming a week or two in advance, which is so, so, so nice. And like, like I said, I've been leading a lot. So, I'm hoping that there'll be a lot of recent leads videos. But like, I film two weeks in advance. So that I can talk about like seven or so books in one video instead of like letting the list of my recent leads, recent leads stack up so that I'm not talking about like 14 books at once because that would be an excessively long video and nobody wants that. So anyway, I've been having a great time. Isolation is honestly doing me good. I really enjoy it. Obviously, I miss things like seeing my friends in school and everything, but isolation in my reading has been so, so, so good. So, anyway, the first book that I read on this list is called When You Know What I Know and by Sonia K. Soto. This has a trigger warning for sexual assault because it follows a 10-year-old girl in the aftermath of when she got assaulted by her uncle. I thought this story was very realistic, haunting, and honestly quite necessary. I think that sexual assault is a very scary topic to discuss, especially in juvenile contemporary, which with such a young audience. But I think that it's very important because I feel like there are so many different types of sexual assault. So I think that it's important to determine and a label what that really means and I think that like this book and other stories like it such as you know maybe he just likes you which I read you know a week or two ago like these stories are very necessary especially for young women who are growing up and they may think that this is like a norm or whatever it's not it shouldn't be a norm and I've read I don't know my train of thought has left the station but basically, I really like the story and I rated it four stars, so. The next book is called Girls Save the World in this one, written by Ash Paulsons. I think that's how you say her name. Anyway, this follows June and her two best friends as they go to this comic con called Zombie Con for their favorite TV show. And then actual zombies attack the place. And you know, they have to like save the world and everything. So that's fun. I rated this book three and a half stars. I guess I would rate it as like YA contemporary slash thriller. I like that it had a fast paced plot. I like the theme of like friendship at the core of it. I didn't really like there was a kind of rushed, not kind of, very rushed unnecessary romance at the end. I don't really like insta love romantic relationships because it, it like it gives me like no time to ship the characters because they're already together you know so I just found that to be very unnecessary so overall I rated the book three and a half stars if there was a sequel which I don't think there is I would not leave the sequel like I don't like it enough to continue the series again this is me justifying my opinion when that's completely unnecessary so anyway I rated this book three and a half stars the next book is called The Fascinator. It's written by Angelo Elio Poros. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Basically, this story reminded me of if these witches don't bone and the infinite noise had a baby because the Fascinators follows Sam, who lives in this small town where magic is kind of like not outlawed, but like it's kind of discouraged. And he has magic. So it's kind of magical realism contemporary. So it's like modern day magic, hence the witches don't bone comparison. And I compare this to the infinite noise because of the romance is similar. So basically, I rated the story three and a half stars. I thought it was good and solid. And it talks about, you know, false love, friendship, magic, all that kind of stuff modern day magic isn't really something that i'm super into because i think that magic should stay in contemporary i mean no magic should stay in fantasy and fantasy and contemporary shouldn't really 
like be combined you know but that's just me um basically what i'm trying to say is that this book was only worth three and a half stars if there was a sequel i don't think that i would read it so yeah another three and a half star book the next book is called the map of stars written by laura ruby this is the conclusion in the york trilogy which is the steampunk juvenile contemporary series about this trio of friends two of which are siblings and they're solving this like mystery from like a century ago so basically this reminds me of like truly devious but for juvenile fiction you know so the map of stars no the map of stars is the conclusion like i said and i really liked it i rated this book four stars it's the most prominent of the trilogy and i just really liked it it had a fast-paced plot as per usual well-developed characters new surprises new plot twists all that fun stuff it had a nice like satisfying satisfying ending which i really really enjoyed you know the problem with conclusions sometimes is that there are no new things re revealed it's just wrapping everything up and this book did a good balance of wrapping everything up and still introducing new plot twists so this trilogy was a good solid series the next book is called we will promise spotlights written by lindsay Sproul. i think that's how you say it this is a ya contemporary coming of age story about a girl who's a lesbian in 1999 so i guess it could also be categorized i suppose as historical fiction i guess i know that 1999 isn't that long ago but for me like i didn't exist then so for me that's historical fiction anyway i didn't like that book this book that much it felt like i was reading a story in the perspective of like astral flores from the half of it which as you know if you've seen my film review astral was my least favorite character in that film and i just this book reminded me of like an emma mills story which as you know if you've been like keeping up with my recent week videos i don't really enjoy those books as much as like everybody else does so basically i liked the writing style of this but i didn't love it so that's why i very generously gave it three stars so i wouldn't recommend it is what i'm trying to say so there's that the next book i read is called Total Under Ice, written by Julia Del Rosario. This is a YA contemporary story about Rowena as she deals with identity, grief, and guilt in the wake of her sister's mysterious disappearance. I really like this story. I ended up rating it three and a half stars, which really surprised me because I read Julia's previous book, 500 Worlds or Less, and I didn't like that book at all, so I wasn't even expecting to pick up Total Under Ice. But I read it because, like I've mentioned 5,000 times, I'm in isolation, obviously, and my options are a little bit limited. So I liked this book. I liked the dual perspectives for both sisters. I love a good sister story. I liked the format that this was written in. I liked, I liked stories in free verse, and Julia's choice of writing the story in free verse was a great story because it really helped me like understand and comprehend both sisters perspectives and it just really helped bring both of them to life and i just really enjoyed that you know so like i said i rated this book three and a half stars i would recommend it if you enjoy ya contemporary or if you were like you know disappointed by 500 words or less like i was so yeah the last book in this list is called who put the song on written by morgan Polko. i really like this book it talks about a young girl named morgan who feels really misunderstood because she's black and has depression and that combination alone is really underrated in ya i'm thinking back on my mental health recommendations video and i feel like most of those protagonists are Caucasian. I just... Like, when you're writing a story with a storyline has nothing to do with skin color, like you can make your protagonist any skin color you want. Yet, when I'm writing, 
when I'm looking at like mental health book recommendations, I just see like the majority of those protagonists is all Caucasian and that's just, you know, completely unnecessary. So basically, who put the song on dissolves just as much hype as the hit you give and the poet X. The lighting just changed drastically because the sun went behind the cloud, if you're wondering. But anyway, this story was just so, so, so good and so impactful. And I really, really liked it. I love this kind of representation, especially at a time now in isolation when like mental health is just so, so important. And it's also equally as important to talk about like black perspectives. I know that I might talk about this a lot, but like I'm black as you can clearly see but like I just love writing I just love reading about stories about people like me and I know that that's something that I talk about a lot but as I've said previously you know I just think it's important to talk about the things that are underrepresented in YA because if I don't talk about them who will who will bring attention and shine light onto these stories you know anyway so I really like this story I rated it four stars. I thought it was really, really good. And really, really solid, and it's really underrated. So, yeah. So, in conclusion, the best books that I read on this list were When You Know What I Know and Who Put This Song On. The worst book was definitely We Will Promise Spotlights. So, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below how your reading month has been going. Mine has been going great. So, that's really wonderful for me. And yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more. Bye.